What's up guys, Phoenix here, this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm deciding to play with Dragoonies again after some minor tweaks to the list because it's just a deck that I enjoy playing way too much to stay away from. It's my favorite deck that has ever existed because of the pure combo potential that the uh, the deck has, and also the fact that it always just gets indirect support anytime any good Wing Beast or any good Dragon support comes out. But uh, So what we're dealing with here is we're dealing with Dark Lords, I'm playing against Canadian Courage who is a person in my, in my normal Discord server. Uh, if you're interested on getting onto that, you can definitely check out the Patreon link in the description because that is how you get access to it. Uh, but, so he is able to go into the Superbia Ixshell play after drawing two. Does he have Casting Out in his graveyard as well? Uh, Banishment, rather. Yes, he does. Um, so he's able to use Ixshell to search the trap, which is going to be very bad slash good for me. It's, it's kind of alright um, at this point. No, it's actually not. Uh, especially... Uh, because of the fact he can search the trap and then have it live, so my ravine is not going to resolve, um, and then I'm going to be able, uh, really not even not even choosing to search the trap here. I find that rather interesting. I guess that means he, I guess this is already it. I mean, <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do as many things as I can before I activate this desires, and then we'll see what the desires gets me. Because I do have soul charge, so I mean I definitely have a good amount of play strength that I have access to. So he's letting this go interestingly enough and so let's see what happens here uh, as long as this isn't something like temptation I think it's gonna be fine I mean it's it's very hard to try and play through anything with this sort of uh, with this sort of thing ah dimensional barrier see that's gonna be a problem for me <laughs> that is going to be an inherent problem because now I can't deal with this so I'm going to get terraforming for the second ravine, just so this terraforming isn't dead in my hand. And then I'm going to desires to try and draw into something that answers like the board, uh, basically. I find it interesting that he didn't just go for the trap, unless the traps are here. I mean, that's very much a possibility. Now, what did I banish? Two Maxis, a Zephyros, and nothing really of value other than the Raigeki. Okay, uh, that's fine. The Maxis I'm not really too worried about right now because of the fact that he's already established stuff on the field. Um, I could Foolish Burial for Darkness Metal and then bring it back with Soul Charge, but I don't think that's a worthy play line. Well, actually, uh, I can Foolish Burial Zephyros and bounce my Phalanx with it, and then I can just overlay into Queen Dragon Jin, which is not big enough to get over either of these. So let's let's scratch that idea. Let's just pass turn. This Dimensional Barrier has caused has caused the, the nonsense to, uh, to, uh, stop. So, he's using his casting out his, uh, banishment here, uh, funnily enough, rather than on the previous turn, uh, searching for Mastuma, and then the dimensional barrier here that I've got is actually going to be largely useless, because of the fact that he's not going to be overlaying for anything other than, like, a rank 8 or a rank 10 that's super, like, not forecasted, uh, and then if it's a rank 10, it's something like Super Dora. <laughs> <laughs> most likely, so it would be unaffected by Dimensional Barrier anyway. Well, Dimensional Barrier would bait its effect on itself, so I guess there is that. But it would still be just horribly hard for me to get over. Uh, so discarding or banishing the Nastin that he just added for the allure. So there is that. Now trade in. So he's just turboing into more cards. But at this point, I think that I just handily lose this game due to the sheer fact that I went second. I opened Ravine for like Soul Charge. If I went first, this game was pretty much in my favor, handily, because of the fact that I'd have like Omega, Crystal Wing, Stardust, Red Med, a Tum. Uh, so there are that. There are those as options and factors. I don't know. I'm not really too worried about losing with this deck though, because it's tribute summon for that. Interesting. Tribute summon for Nastin. And uh, this is the one that can special summon itself. So I find that ah. That would be why. So we both have Soul Charge. Very neat. Um, so he's going to be able to Soul Charge for two Superbias. And that Superbia, the Superbias are going to be able to trigger bringing back uh, two uh, two things. So that's going to suck for me. Uh, so this game is largely probably over. Well, actually, no, because uh, he can't attack me this turn. So he's just going to be using this to set up advantage uh, for his play lines, which is, I mean, an arguably good play. Because he's able to make a rank 8 here, he's able to 
use these. Uh, does he have access to the trap? He has access to altar, uh, which means that he could detach from a rank 8 and then bring it back immediately with either of these. Uh, the Superbia, but the Superbia would, one, miss timing, and two, I don't think there's any other Dark Lords in his grave. Yeah, there's definitely just not. So, the question here is, how do I play out of this? Okay, Galaxy Eye Cypher. So, this is going to be fun, because what this means is this means that I'm going to be able to call with Dimensional, I'm going to be able to call Xyz here with Dimensional Barrier. Uh, and that's going to be fine, because that means my board stays where it is. Uh, and that's, that's good. <laughs> Because that means next turn I get to start my turn with, like, going straight into Crystal Wing, and then being able to summon Ducks, and then being able to Soul Charge if need be, or do Foolish for Zephyros. There's a few different options I have as far as uh, my play lines, but now he can't attack me, and this is stuck here. So he can't jump up into Full Armor Photon Dragon uh, and uh, do anything there, but he can do the Altar Play to bring back Superbia. Now, if he does have access to any other way to put another level 8 on the board, then, I mean, I guess that'd be pretty good, but otherwise, the Superbia is here, and he's got these two sets that are going to cause me grief. I can just feel it in my bones. Uh, Zephyros. That was a pretty good card to draw. That means now I could just, like, foolish... Really, just Dimensional Barrier straight off the rip. Well, that's unfortunate. Dimensional Barrier upon Dimensional Barrier upon Dimensional Barrier. Uh, so now I can't play my turn. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just not good for me. Um, shit. Well, I've got to deal with this in some way, but I don't have a rank 4 that does that. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be an issue. I don't even think that it's not even worth playing out this game anymore. Because I can't deal with the threats that are existing on the board. That sucks. Uh, the only thing I can really do is, like, if I had, like, Legionnaire Ackles, then those would be cards that would out this board. But on the same, like, in the same regard, like those cards suck right now. Um, so like, it's not gonna be the, not gonna be the way things go. <laughs> uh, but so these are both 23, which I feel like that's respectable. Uh, but still not big enough to get over literally anything on his side of the field. So yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm just gonna surrender here because there's literally no reason to, there's no reason to try and mess with this because I can't do anything. He's just gonna kill me next turn if he doesn't. Then there's no... I mean, like, he's already got access into a way to attack over my two duxes in the form of the Cypher Dragon already just chilling here. So there is that. Uh, so this is going to be the Desires being activated first. That's a dux. And let's check what got banished here. The Darkness Metal got banished, which kind of sucks, but it's perfectly fine as far as how the play line is going to be structured from here. So, I've got access to Barrier and I've got access to Chalice, uh, but Chalice is actually much more valuable than Barrier in this uh, in this instance. So I'm going to discard the Barrier and send Phalanx to Grave. Did I banish two Duxes too? No, that was sending the Dragons to Grave, so Dux wasn't an option. wasn't a prompt. That's why. But so what we'll do is we'll uh, do this. The Baby Rock was also banished, if I remember correctly, right? Yes, it was. So the one of Garuda and the one of Baby Rock are banished, but that's fine. Uh, that's 100% fine, because I can make Gator, I can special all my stuff, um, or I can just go straight into my 8 and then Soul Charge back my things. And uh, that would also be pretty advantageous, so let's do that. That's actually just better here. Yes. 100%. So the Phalanx will come back, I'll be able to make Crystal Wing, and then I'll be able to Soul Charge uh, for my 6s and my stuff. I could also make Omega. Um, I can make Crystal Wing, I can leave my board the way it is, I'm not really too scared of a board wipe, I don't think. Um, I don't know, it all just depends. But, so what we'll do is we'll summon, we'll summon all of these, and that will allow me to go into Zephyros, uh, off of these, then I can, I can go into Gatorg, add discard Zephyros, uh, bounce, but then I make a tum, yeah, and I make another, uh, I make another level eight. So that will be fine. It's a bit of a waste of how they're being used, but the the darkness metal is gone, so there's no real reason to hold things like the Zephyros uh, when you can just meld your board with it. Uh, so there is definitely that to take into account. But so we'll just overlay these into a tum, use it, and then from here we'll be able to summon a phalanx from deck, 
which will then be able to be bounced uh, and uh, will not bounce the flanks, but will bounce the ravine so that it stays out of harm's way, I guess. <laughs> I guess we could say. Uh, for Zephyros, then go into Vajrayana and go into... Uh, if I still had Soul Charge or if I had like Call of the Haunteds or something in this deck, I'd probably go into Omega just so I could put the Darkness Metal back in my graveyard and then bring it back. But as it stands right now, I think that I just value the fact that he could Twin Twister me or Board Wipe me at any point. So I'm just going to make the Stardust because this Atom here has an immense amount of value next turn anyway because it can summon uh, it can summon the last Mistleton from deck, meaning that the Ravine can add Ducks, meaning that's a rank 6 because you can make the Vajrayana that's still in the extra deck into uh, Ptolemy and you can just do things there. So a Kaiju over my Crystal Wing. That's a bit... That's a bit sad. That's a bit off-putting. So he is playing Dark Lord Kaijus. Uh, so I'm just going to strike that. I'm just going to strike it. It's a plus one. And he's already taken a minus one, giving me the Kaiju. So now he's down to three cards. Um, and so the fact that like this just this just works very well for me. If he doesn't draw any other combo pieces... Uh, another game I see. <laughs> All right. I can see it. I can see the plays. So now he has two cards to work with in his entire hand. Uh, he specialed the Gamma Seal in attack mode because that's what he has to. And the other ravine is banished, so uh, not really a problem that I'm facing here as far as this goes. I can just suicide this. Um, I don't even have to suicide it, though, because I can just add ducks and then do my plays. And I also have Chalice, so if I'm a little bit short on game, uh, it'll be pretty easy. Uh, easy to deal with, at least. Uh, now the thing is that I'm going to be going second game three, and that's going to be a problem if he's able to establish a board um, with his uh, Dark Lord stuff, because his deck has a searchable trap that uh, that destroys, which means that it's going to be removing ducks from the board or removing ravine from the board. His deck essentially searches MST, my nemesis, my <laughs> my long lost nemesis, the Dragon Ravine. But so what we'll do is we'll uh, put these here. Um, I can special Mistleton out of deck here, or I can just go into Scrap Dragon and then uh, special Mistleton and then do something. Uh, this isn't really what I was expecting to have as far as a play line, uh, but we can work with it. So we'll do this, and yeah, I guess we'll just go into. Oh, we can go into Omega. That's actually pretty decent, but Scrap Dragon just outs this. And so that's that's the easiest way. I'm just I guess I'm just not going to use this Atum's second material. I guess I'm just not. Um, all of my uh, like duxes are basically just non-factors, and so now I just get to attack for game because each one of these is over a quarter of his life. Uh, so there is that. So just a nice quick game. Uh, holding the chalice here is arguably was arguably better than the barrier, like I said earlier, because of the fact that his deck isn't really affected by barrier. Um, and Chalice can negate, like, Superbias when he summons them. It can negate its shells on my turn. Uh, so, like, Chalice is going to be, like, probably the key card, if I draw it next game, would probably be the key card of how uh, of how the game needs to be played uh, because of the fact that I can negate its shell with it. So if he has the Trap and Grave, I'm not going to be dealing with it twice, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but I could also just draw something like Max C. Hey! <laughs> Maxi and a bunch of fucking trap cards. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, this is going to be bad if I don't get to draw a couple of cards off this Maxi. Um, I could draw Ravine, or I could draw Phalanx. Um, so there's there's a couple of things I could draw. Uh, what do you discard here? Superbia. Excellent. So that sets up a great play uh, for me to be able to Maxi him effectively, because he's going to want to get his stuff. Um, Pot of Desires here. So we're both playing Desires in our decks. That's right, he played Desires game one. Uh, trade in for another Superbia, so he's just turboing on. If I don't see a Dimensional Barrier on my turn, then I'm going to be really surprised as to what's going on here as far as uh, as far as far his play option. Uh, but he could very well just not actually put any monsters on the board as well, because uh, we haven't seen any Altars yet. Um, if that's its TCG name. I can't remember. The Dark Lord cards are so... Like kind of irrelevant that I don't remember the, the monster reborn spell. I think it's I think it's either alter or contact. I think alter was its OCG translated name. And I think it's Dark Lord Contact um, for us here in the TCG. Uh, but that's right. He does play these cards. 
Um, and I'm not. I'm just not even gonna max C here because it doesn't really affect me what he makes. I'm wanting to get the guaranteed, like the guaranteed draws off this max C, but it looks like that's just not gonna be the case. All right. Well, so we've got Phalanx and we've got Mistleton, which is a pretty good combination of cards, considering that I'm almost positive this is Dimensional Barrier, uh, because that's the only back row I've seen this entirety, the entirety of these games. Uh, unless this just happens to be the Dark Lord Raigeki Break, then in which case this is just going to be infinitely better if this is Barrier, because uh, he basically would have to Barrier like now. Um, ah, a Max C. How kind. Um, but I'm just going to summon this into attack mode, and then I'm going to attack over the Totem Bird, and just get the free value there. Attack for 500, because he does pay a lot in his deck when he starts moving, when he starts rolling. And then I'm going to Synchro into Stardust to protect these cards. This emptiness and these two dimensional barriers that I've got access to, which are both basically utterly useless <laughs> against this matchup. Uh, as I've already addressed before, but it's whatever. Uh, it just it seems like it's it's going to be a problem for me. Okay, so he's using Desires again, which I find incredibly ridiculous. He's got two cards left in his deck. Uh, I don't know if that was correct, man. I feel like that was a card. I feel like you just had to suck it up and hold the Desires as the minus one. Either that or you just bricked horribly, uh, which this deck is prone to doing. That's the problem it has had since its release. Uh, the Speedroid engine does definitely give a little bit of an added boost to it, though, especially since, like, you can make Dantes and shit. Uh, so that seems pretty cool. I would not be surprised if all of his Monster Reborns are over in the Banish Zone, because there are 20 face-down Banish cards. I would not be surprised. And, like, that that's a problem, if that's, if that's how the game plan works. Like, this is one of those cases in a few where Desires will just absolutely just rape you as far as your capabilities in the game, and if that's what just happened here, then damn it. Like, <laughs> what a master. Um, especially in this in attack mode is kind of interesting. Uh, but at this point, like, the game is arguably just over. Like, all I have to do is just not let him kill me for two turns, and then it's just my victory. So, so that's, that's the weird part. Setting a monster, too. What are you playing that's a normal summon in the Dark Lord deck? This is four back row. So I, this four back row, this, these, these are incredibly scary cards uh, back here for me to try and deal with. Uh, so I literally don't have to do anything for a few turns, especially since I've got Vanity's Emptiness and Max C. So like, I just don't have to do anything. I'm just going to let him deck out. That seems like it's the best course of action for me. Uh, the only way he doesn't deck out is if... Uh, is if, uh, like, is there Dark Lord spells and traps and grave? No, he just bricked horribly. After resolving all of those draw cards, he bricked horrendously. And so it's just something he's not gonna be able to do it. So he set max C. That's, that's, okay, that's smart. I can, I can, I can, I can fight with that. I can, I can reason with that on why that's there. But the thing is, he doesn't get to kill me. Um, he doesn't get to kill me. Because now he's got his own Vandy's Fiend on the board. Which means that the most that he's going to be able to do to me after I've just passed my turn, even without setting a monster, is 36, which is not enough for my life total. And that's a Raigeki. I'm just going to set this and pass. Um, like, that's the last card in your deck. This is so simple. I, I hate how simplified this has become, but that's what it is. I don't even know what these cards are. I might save the replay and go check what these cards are and see what was banished off Desires. I haven't done that in a really long time, uh, but it's definitely something that I might go check because of the fact that it's just so unorthodox, like what's going on here. Because now he's going to attack me with the Vandy's Fiend, and it's not going to be enough for game. And even if it was close to game, it needs to be game at this point because he has no cards left in deck. Now watch me get to like savaged by some like card that flips and puts like one card on top of his deck and I just end my turn and lose. Uh, <laughs> uh, watch that be like the case. Uh, but actually, well, I've I've got access to a ravine now, so I'm gonna Raigeki. I'm gonna Raigeki and just play my turn uh, as if as if it didn't matter. So yeah, dimensional barrier calling. What is that? What do you call? I didn't actually see the prompt. Calling ritual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I see. Um, I see it. I see the plays. You know what, I'm just gonna pass turn. There's no way he there's no way he can kill me. 
Um, and there's no way that he cannot just, like, not draw cards. There's no way that that wasn't going to happen. Okay, so I'm going to go check this replay. Because this is the first time I've done this in a long time. But I'm going to go check this replay. So we will be right back. Alright, well, so I just derped out and I hit cancel on the save replay function because I use it so infrequently now. So, muscle memoried my way over to the cancel button. So now I just have to ask him in Discord what his cards were. But anyway, this one was a weird video. But, I mean, hey, weird things happen in Yu-Gi-Oh! But anyway, as always guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Links are in the description to Facebook and Patreon if you want to support me directly, if you want to help the channel grow, if you want to help future projects be possible, if you want to get in on a monthly giveaway at the end of this month for some form of large amount of Konami product uh, and it's form of a raffle giveaway then you could definitely go check that out for uh, anything you'd like to do as well as it's the way that you get onto my discord server which is where uh, Canadian Courage came from but this one was a weird one as I've already said let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below but other than that like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do uh, let me know what your thoughts are again I keep saying that multiple times in every video but it's because I actually do just like like reading comments uh, at certain points but other than that Thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, and as always guys, take care. I will see you in the next video.